With me today is the GNSO Council Leadership Team, Chair James Bodell and Vice Chairs Heather Forrest and Donna Austin. Welcome to Hyderabad, all three of you. James, uh, this ICANN Annual General Meeting comes in the back of what can only be described as an historic year for ICANN. Uh, looking back at those key landmarks, IANA transition being completed uh, and the development of the new meeting schedule, what do these key changes mean for the GNSO? Uh, thanks, David. Uh, I think uh, all of us could feel a, a collective sigh of relief when the IANA transition was completed earlier last month. And while that marked the end of a number of years of cumulative effort on the part of the community, it kicked off a new era in, in the uh, uh, history of ICANN. And the GNSO, as an important com contributor to that community, uh, we have to figure out how we're going to uh, participate effectively in this post iana environment. And with regard to your question about the meeting schedules, I think we're still getting our legs underneath us a little bit. I think we've become creatures of habit and knowing that certain sessions are going to pl take place on certain days. Uh, that was disrupted a little bit with meeting B in Helsinki and it's been disrupted quite a bit with this meeting in Hyderabad. But uh, generally I think that the, it's going to demonstrate that the community uh, as a whole and the GNSO in particular is uh, flexible and can um, adapt to address these new challenges. And Donna, the, the GNSO has established uh, a number of new work streams to take on these new challenges that James talked about. They're going to have a particular impact on how the GNSO interacts with the rest of the community. And we're, I'm thinking here particularly of the bylaws drafting team, uh, the appointment of a new liaison to the GAC, and uh, the appointment of an interim GNSO representative to the empowered community. How do you think these initiatives are going to affect the way the GNSO works? So David, I think to some extent it's not going to be a significant change to the way that the GNSO operates, but understanding that um, we do have new responsibilities as a result and we need to step up into those when, you know, at any point in time if we consider that it's necessary to do so. I think with the, um, you know, the, the drafting team on the bylaws, that's an important um, discussion that's going on at the moment. And we are seeing that there are some sensitivities into some of the, you know, the roles for the GNSO and particularly how the council fits into some of those um, you know, new roles or the, the way the bylaws have been drafted. I think you know, the critical um, initiative for us is a continuation of the GAC liaison role. The relationship that the, G that the GNSO council in particular has with the GAC, um, we need to evolve that and we need to establish a better, um, better communications and relationship um, between the, the two parties and also get a better, a better understanding of you know, what our different roles and responsibilities are moving forward. And Heather, alongside uh, this new work, um, the traditional policy work of GSO has continued and will continue here in Hyderabad with meetings of working groups including the review of rights protection mechanisms in all GTLDs, uh, the working group on registration directory services, the IGO, INGO Access to Creative Rights Protections Working Group and the new GTLD Subsequent Procedures Working Group. What are your expectations for these discussions? Thanks David. It's excellent to be here in Hyderabad to have made it to this point in the year, to have made it through our new meeting A, B and C schedule and with the IANA transition behind us. I think what we'll see here in Hyderabad is the GNSO community getting back to being able to focus on what it does best and, and what its true purpose is, which is policy development. Um, these things that, that you've identified, these PDP working groups that we have afoot, I'm quite numerous, I'm quite voluminous in, in terms of their scope, um, there's quite a bit going on and I think what we're seeing here in Hyderabad is with that renewed, um, refreshed focus on what it is that we do, which is, which is policy development, we're coming to grips with some pretty big issues. Um, we're finding that there are some significant overlaps between several of these PDPs that you've mentioned. Um, we have several coming to, to milestones by the end of the year um, and I think we'll see that it's time to tackle some of these bigger questions. I also think that what we'll see is, is a continued or, or renewed plea from the GNSO community to the other SOs and ACs within ICANN to get more involved in our PDP work. This is something that we've been emphasizing throughout the year. But now with the transition behind us and this return focus to what it is that we're supposed to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I think you'll find that, that certainly the three of us and, and our, our colleagues on the GNSO Council and, and throughout the GNSO community will be encouraging other members of the broader ICANN community to get more involved in what we're doing. 
So it sounds like it's going to be another very busy week for the GNSO. Between this meeting in Hyderabad and the next meeting in Copenhagen in 2017, what do you, each of you, think are going to be the, the major priorities for the GNSO in that time? I think following up on, on the discussion that we've just had about the PDP work, um, we will see some major milestones in terms of, of um, the Curative Rights PDP Working Group producing its, um, its initial report and an opportunity for the community to comment on that. Um, that will segue into other discussions that, that we're having with the board and, and the GAC on, on certain issues. Um, so I think those milestones will help in terms of demonstrating our ability to achieve our deliverables in the face of some pretty big challenges this year. And aside from the PDPs, we certainly have a, a number of other work streams in process. Uh, we have a number of review teams that are being started either later this year or early next. We have a continuation of uh, some of the work that we've done relative to work stream two uh, and uh, uh, also the need to fill uh, other roles as well throughout the community. So between now and, and Copenhagen, I expect the work will the workload will only increase. So building on largely what Heather said, I, I think one of the challenges for the, the GNSO Council as the managers of the PDP work, ensuring that we do have engagement for the rest from the rest of the community in the work as it's taking place. And I think that's the important piece, while it's taking place, not after the fact. We expect with the new GTLD subsequent procedures that there's a number of different issues that are being pulled out of those that different parts of the community are going to have you know, different perspectives of. It's really important that those perspectives are, are aired during the policy development work, not afterward with the board or you know, the GAC coming up late with, with advice. So we need to find ways to engage the community early in that work to make sure that once we get to the end of that product that we're on pretty good ground in terms of those recommendations and putting those forward to the board. Well, in light of all of that, thank you very much for taking time to speak to us today. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, David.